We're going to read a good bit of this article together before breaking everything down. So hang in there so we can explore what we need to know as crypto investors going forward. Let's hit it. BlackRock files for Bitcoin ETF with SEC. The SEC has rejected all Bitcoin ETF applications. However, BlackRock's ETF success rate with the SEC is 575 to 1. What about its Bitcoin application? Well, BlackRock may have found a way to get SEC approval for a spot Bitcoin ETF. The asset management giant included a surveillance sharing agreement in its proposal, which would eliminate the risk of market manipulation related to Bitcoin. On page 36 of the NASDAQ, where the proposed ETF will be listed, 19B4 filing, it stated that to mitigate any market manipulation, NASDAQ will be brought in to enter into a surveillance sharing agreement with an operator of a spot trading platform for Bitcoin. Surveillance sharing agreements allow for the sharing of information about market trading activity, clearing activity, and customer identification, allowing for little possibility of market manipulation. NASDAQ's proposed surveillance sharing agreement, dubbed the Spot BTC SSA, is what makes this application different. And not simply the company's size as the largest asset manager in the world, said Grime Moore, head of tokenization at Polymesh Association. The SEC is very concerned with market manipulation related to Bitcoin prices and has cited this in almost if not all previous rejections, Moore said in an emailed statement. This is because the SEC's view is that Coinbase and others are not regulated as exchanges and therefore cannot be trusted to prevent fraudulent and manipulative acts and practices. Yeah, not true, and others know it as well. Industry veteran Dave Weisberger, CEO and co-founder of CoinRoutes, countered that any such surveillance sharing agreement is superfluous. Why should it be necessary? Weisberger said in an interview with Coindesk. Because Kraken, Coinbase, ItBit, LMAX, and Bitstamp, all of their data feeds are public, he added. The SEC could clearly get all of this data or hire someone to feed it to them. You can know every trade and every order. And that will give the SEC the ability to say, hey, this looks like a manipulative trade. Who did it? Yeah. The long and short, as we've discussed in this video about what's happening in a nutshell, which you can check out by clicking on the link above, is this is all part of an elaborate plan for Wall Street, the federal government, and traditional finance at large in the US to control crypto. And with Wall Street, it looks like it may start with the world's largest asset manager. With over $9 trillion worth of assets under management, as of March 2023, BlackRock. BlackRock, the big dog in global finance, has created major FOMO among other big Wall Street players. Check out this insane slew of news hitting the headlines in just the past few days. Wisdom Tree files to start a US spot Bitcoin ETF on the heels of BlackRock's application. Invesco reapplies for Bitcoin ETF. They first filed for a Bitcoin ETF in the fall of 2021, but has since reapplied in light of BlackRock's application. Fidelity Investments is reportedly filing a BlackRock type spot Bitcoin ETF and submitting a bid to acquire Grayscale Investments. New crypto exchange EDX, backed by Citadel Securities, Fidelity and Schwab starts operation. Deutsche Bank applies for digital asset license in Germany as TradFi pushes further into crypto. What the heck is going on? Well, there's a lot to unpack, so let's break it down into simple, easy to understand concepts and ideas and explore them together, starting with ETFs. All of these big financial institutions are applying for a spot Bitcoin ETF, which is different from a Bitcoin futures ETF, which already exists on the market. So first, let's learn about what a regular old ETF is fundamentally. Yes, this is a black eye, more on that in a bit. Hello, I'm Crypto Casey, and in this video, we are going to explore what a spot Bitcoin ETF is, the implications of it being approved, and how Wall Street, the Fed, and US government will use it to take complete control over Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency markets at large. Let's hit it. Please be sure to check out our sponsors, iTrust Capital, Tangent Wallet, and Morales Money. Trade cryptocurrencies tax-free within your own individual retirement account or IRA with iTrust Capital. Invest in this amazing alternative to ledger wallets called Tangent Wallet that never reveals your private keys to anyone ever. It's a hardware wallet that is the size of a credit card, multi-currency, multi-chain, super easy to set up, and it lets us trade altcoins faster, more securely, and conveniently to take profits on the go. And learn how to explore and find brand new altcoin crypto gems before they pump in the next face-melting bull cycle using Morales Money. So be sure to scroll down and use links below to access the correct and official sites, as well as redeem any special offers they have for us. Sweet. What is an ETF? 
ETF stands for Exchange Traded Fund, and that's just a fancy term for a financial product investors can add to their overall portfolio. Breaking down the words Exchange Traded Fund, let's start with the word fund. Check it out. While a traditional stock represents a share of one specific company, like Apple versus Google versus Amazon, with an ETF, imagine a fund that includes stocks of all three of these companies. So basically a basket of tech stocks. And to keep it short and simple, this fund is named AGA, or AGA, because it's a mix of a basket of Apple, Google, and Amazon stock. Cool. Now for the exchange-traded words of an ETF. To allow other investors like us to own shares of this fund, it is listed on an exchange, like Fidelity or E-Trade, so we are able to buy, sell, and trade shares of AGA. So with this AGA ETF, it allows investors like us to get exposure to all three companies without having to buy individual stocks from each company separately. This means we can basically invest in the AGA ETF shares the same exact way we would invest in any other regular stock on an exchange, because this fund has shares that can be traded on an exchange. Reorganizing these words is where we get the term exchange traded fund. Pretty simple, right? Sweet. Now let's quickly touch on the differences between futures versus short versus spot ETFs and then explore the implications of the approval of a spot Bitcoin ETF. What is a Bitcoin futures ETF? Futures in the realm of ETFs refer to futures contracts, which is simply an agreement where a buyer and seller agree to exchange a specific amount of an asset on a specific day for a specific price. So a Bitcoin futures ETF is a fund that holds contracts that are linked to the price of Bitcoin. And it's important to understand that they do not actually hold any Bitcoin. So basically, using a Bitcoin futures ETF, we can buy, sell, and trade contracts that dictate which specific day at which specific price a specific amount of Bitcoin will be bought or sold. What this does is give big institutional investors that are otherwise still not completely in the clear to invest in Bitcoin the ability to get price exposure of Bitcoin through futures contracts. Nice. Next, what is a short Bitcoin ETF? A short ETF also more commonly known in the finance realm as an inverse ETF, is a fund designed to profit from a decrease in the value of an asset. Investors use this type of ETF to hedge their overall portfolios, and it's similar to taking a short position on the future price of an asset. However, it doesn't require the investor to hold a margin account which is required when trading and shorting positions. So the Bitcoin short ETF is a way for people to potentially make money when or if the price of Bitcoin goes down, which can be used to also hedge their overall investment portfolios. Amazing. Now for the spot ETF. What is a spot Bitcoin ETF? The word spot or spot price means the current market price. So a spot Bitcoin ETF is a fund that allows investors to buy and sell Bitcoin at the price it is at that moment in time. And the fund actually buys and sells and holds Bitcoin, which would allow investors to hold Bitcoin without having to manage it with their own wallet. So the ETF would be a custodian for investors in Bitcoin. Why is this a big deal? Well, there are a ton of people with a ton of money held with their legacy finance and retirement accounts on Fidelity, Charles Schwab, and similar. And a spot Bitcoin ETF would be a regulated, stable way for all these people to gain price exposure to Bitcoin in their investment portfolios. This would open up the floodgates to a ton of money that's been on the sidelines waiting for regulatory clarity. Because the SEC granting approval of a spot Bitcoin ETF would be enough clarity for any person, institution, retirement account provider, etc. to pretty much invest in Bitcoin on the stock market. Right now, you'd have to open up an account with a dedicated crypto IRA provider like iTrust Capital, which you can check out by clicking on the link below, or by opening up accounts with crypto exchanges like Coinbase or Kraken, which a lot of people with retirement accounts simply are interested in messing with, which is likely for the best right now in light of the SEC attacking them. And also, we don't want to store crypto investments on crypto exchanges. Potential investors would also have to take the time to figure out how to set up their own crypto wallets, which can be complicated for a lot of older people with a lot of money invested. So a spot Bitcoin ETF is designed to allow more people to invest in Bitcoin without the hassle of actually buying it. And it eliminates the need for additional security procedures because the fund would custody the Bitcoin. As you can see, traditional investors are very familiar and comfortable with ETFs and one that would make investing in Bitcoin as simple and straightforward as any other stock or ETF allows money to flow into the space without people having to take time to learn about blockchain, wallets, mining, keys, and everything else. Cool. 
So why has the SEC approved to legalize gambling of the future price of Bitcoin, as well as betting via shorts that the price will decline, but still hasn't approved the simple, straightforward spot price investment vehicle for Bitcoin? Well, literally one year ago, back in June, we discussed how it was seeming more and more like the SEC was waiting for its traditional banking buddies to get ready to compete in the spot Bitcoin ETF space before granting approval. And a year later, just this week, this agenda may have been confirmed and come to fruition soon. Now, in the video I posted last week and mentioned to check out at the beginning of this video, we cover what's going on in a nutshell. However, with BlackRock's, the world's largest asset manager, and other big Wall Street players like Fidelity, slated to be first to market with a spot Bitcoin ETF, is there an even crazier potential outcome on the horizon? Besides for controlling fiat on and off ramps to crypto in the US? Well, check out this tweet by Chris Bleck that outlines a prediction with an extremely interesting timeline of events. BlackRock first runs the first and largest Bitcoin ETF, then it becomes wildly successful. Next, BlackRock heavily funds Bitcoin development and later proposes a regulatory and eco-friendly proof of stake fork of Bitcoin, which loses community opinion but adopts the new fork as Bitcoin anyways, as most governments do, leaving the real original proof of work Bitcoin just for pirates and El Salvador. Wow, so if any of that didn't make sense, basically BlackRock could be big and powerful enough to make a copy of the current Bitcoin blockchain, reprogram it to suit their agenda, and spin it off to the world as the new compliant version of Bitcoin, which they completely control and then have the government outlaw the open, neutral, free Bitcoin blockchain that was originally created for the people that cannot be controlled by a single person, company, government, or entity. Yeah, that's not good. And what's worse is as much as it sounds like a conspiracy. Here is a hidden gem in the BlackRock ETF filing. In the event of a hard fork of Bitcoin network, the sponsor will, if permitted by the terms of the trust agreement, use its discretion to determine which network should be considered the appropriate network for the trust's purposes, and in doing so, may adversely affect the value of the shares. There is no guarantee that the sponsor will choose the digital asset that is ultimately the most valuable fork. Yikes. Big yikes. Also within the purview, in true TradBuy fashion, BlackRock would be able to dictate who is allowed to redeem Bitcoin, as well as how much. And interestingly enough, Chris Black may have called it back in May in this tweet, medium term attack vector. One, US government will hard fork Bitcoin to a proof of stake chain. They'll call it Bitcoin. Validators will be whitelisted if they meet certain regulatory requirements. The 21 million Bitcoin cap will be removed. All on and off ramps for Bitcoin proof of work chain will be nuked and replaced with on and off ramps for the new fake Bitcoin proof of stake chain, where you'll get a 25% redemption rate on the proof of stake chain for each Bitcoin from the non-government proof of work chain that you will sell to the government. So one real Bitcoin would be equal to 0.25 fake Bitcoin. Crazy. So this is just an extension of what we discussed in previous videos, and it's extremely interesting to consider. Does this mean Bitcoin is doomed? No, it just means that it will be harder for people in the US to invest in the real Bitcoin and transfer it to hold in their own cold storage hardware wallets. In this elaborate scam, the government would basically be stealing real Bitcoin at a discount from us, similar to how they stole gold from us and banned us from owning it a few decades ago, all in an effort to amass more Bitcoin than other competing global powers. Because I think they finally know, crypto isn't going anywhere. So if you don't have your own crypto wallet where you can completely own and control real Bitcoin before the shiz hits the fan, check out Tangent Wallet. Tangent Wallet is a cryptocurrency cold storage hardware wallet that looks like a regular credit card, and the card is very simple in design, with just a chip that is an advanced standalone microcomputer with the highest standard of security among crypto wallets, known as EAL6+, which is a level of protection similar to that of NASA and passports. The source code of the Tandrum mobile application is all available for anyone to view and inspect on GitHub, which is extremely important because with full transparency, we can be sure that there are no backdoors built into the wallet. When we activate our Tandrum wallet, the chip in the card generates a random private key that neither Tandrum nor anyone can see, view, or know what it is. This card is used each time we make a transaction, so the private keys are never provided to any third parties and the Tandrum app or company also does not collect any information. So the private keys on our cards are never exposed, which makes it impossible to steal or trick us out of our funds. Instead of seed phrases as our only way to back up our wallets, 
Backup copies of the wallet are created and used on other Tangem wallet cards that we encrypt with our own unique access code we create for each card. Also note the pricing for this cryptocurrency hardware wallet is much cheaper and more affordable than other ones with free shipping and an option to pay in crypto. This is a plus for any beginners just getting started or anyone who is looking to onboard friends and family into crypto with a simple, easy to use, secure self-custody wallet. So be sure to scroll down and use the link below to access Tangem's correct and official site, as well as redeem any special offers they have for us. Cool. So the black eye was the result of an over-enthusiastic attempt at a jump hug thing with a friend where my cheekbone collided with some solid part of their face. It didn't actually hurt, but I woke up with my first ever black eye. Wish I had a cooler, more dramatic story. I will tell you though, black eyes take a long time to clear up. This is with makeup on going on day seven. So I just had to suck it up and film like this. Too much going on in the markets to sit it out. Awesome. If you would like to watch a step-by-step -step video guide all about Tangent Wallet, check out this video. If you would like to learn about more tools like Tangent Wallet, we can add to our DeFi toolkit before Wall Street and the government tries to restrict our access to real crypto, check out this video. And to get your very own Tangent Wallet, click on the link on the screen. Like and subscribe for more. Be safe out there.